fishermen from the far northeast of Scotland read port for some of the cruelest seas in the world. <laughs> Theirs is the most dangerous job in Britain. Now, in Trollerman, a new generation of fishermen are about to make their mark, braving violent storms and deadly conditions. All to put fish on our plates. miles out in the North Atlantic, Alan Watt, one of Scotland's most successful fishermen, is hunting for monkfish. These elusive creatures are some of the most valuable in the sea. Okay, guys? But so far, all Alan's got are worthless dogfish. This looks like a pile of rubbish. These are marketable fish. They're totally worthless. It's certainly not what I was seeing here last trip. I'm just a nightmare. Alan's now steamed Genesis 50 miles away from this last haul of dogfish. He's seeking out new fishing grounds and won't relax until he's found his prey. You get a notion in your mind there's going to be fish in that area. And unless you play it out, it's going to niggle on the back of your head all the time. So. You just, you just get uh, like a plan in your mind and you just try to play it out based on where you can. Out in the North Atlantic, waves have thousands of miles to build into a massive swell, making conditions dangerous even on quiet days. It just shows you even a day like this, where the weather's not too bad, you get one rogue. Just, there's just one. Never so many waves. Trollermen are 30 times more likely to die at work than the average employee. Most of Genesis' crew are in their early 20s. They are Alan's responsibility. <laughs> what I worry most about is the safety of the crew. Is somebody getting injured, falling over the side. I mean, that's the last thing you ever want to happen. And it, there has, over the years, there has been uh, guys injured, and uh, that's my biggest concern. Genesis is designed to shoot and trawl her two massive nets in open waters 4,000 feet deep. She's a monkfish predator, and has hopefully seen the last of the dogfish. Hundred and fifty miles southeast from Genesis, in the middle of the North Sea, is the fifteen meter prawn trawler New Dawn. Twenty three year old Chaz Bruce is Fraser Burr's youngest skipper. I feel like a ballerina. But over the last ten days, nothing has gone right for the smallest boat in the prawn fleet. Fished for prawns through gales for next to nothing. Not much prawns today, skipper. Then their propeller was fouled by a rope. Still dangerous. Foot slips out of place for if the weather comes away again tomorrow. Goes back into the farm, could be left idle in the middle of the sea. As soon as they were back in action, they had to abandon their main net. Those setbacks are behind them. Today is a new day for the new dawn. The weather is perfect for prawns. There's more trouble ahead for Chaz and the boys. Oh, and a bloody rope here! They managed to slice another net to pieces with the propeller. Oh, 
Chaz had his work cut out if he is to salvage anything from his relentless run of bad luck. Oh. On Genesis, Alan Watt is hoping his luck is about to change, rewarding him at last with a haul of monkfish. Been at sea for three days now and need a catch just to cover basic running costs. That's the boys. There's nearly a ton of monkfish. There's a good month of monks here. The monkfish, or anglerfish, is a lethal bottom-dwelling predator. Sticking out the bottom is this fishing rod, and this imitates a wee fish. It just waves it back. Some of the other fish come along. I see it. They go to eat it, and it's... Bang! With a monk, you'll see the teeth. So when you put your hand in a monk's mouth and it closes, the last thing you want to do is pull it out quick because it, the teeth jam in. Ah! <laughs> boys, On the new dawn, the crew are trying to pull the remains of the mangled net out of the propeller by hand. Pull the thing up, boys! Haul out your strength! Chaz is fighting to save his hall of bronze. What's the good in there? Well, the good in there, but it's not on top. Give me a sip. The propeller has sliced the bag of prawns, the cod end, clean off the rest of the net. As I touch the dog rope, hi. They might just be able to salvage the catch if they can get a rope around the cod end. We've oh. managed to save it. We broke it, wrapped the net, so I must go away and made that. The good news is they can save the hull. But the bad news is the rope has reached breaking point. Oh, oh, Jazz has to attach a new rope before he can finally get the catch on board. Right, try last again, try. Forward. The new Don carries three nets. On this trip alone, Chaz has torn one to shreds and totally lost another. But at least he has a hopper full of prawns to show for all his pains. I finally got someone there in the end. I thought we'd lost the, the code at the end, but full of prawns, but I actually got them both at bottom. I knew we'd all there again. Nice prawns, so both blew it another net. So that's me down to one net from three in just four days. Keeping a boat operational rests entirely upon a skipper's shoulders. Alan Watt has lived with the pressures for over 20 years. I've been doing my bed a few days, but I don't sleep. I'm coming up and down, down for a half an hour, back up, down and try and sleep again, and then back up. If it since we came out over two and a half days, probably, I'd be lucky if it's six hours sleep. Altogether. Alan's lack of sleep is about to get a whole lot worse. Just as Genesis starts to catch big hauls of monkfish, her main winch malfunctions. It's a hard loss. Alan and the crew battle through the night yeah. using their brute strength to keep it running. Thing. 
but Alan's efforts are in vain. By mid-morning, the main witch seizes for good. There's something broken. And I see the winch laying on the way I leave it like it should be. It's stuck in the same position. So I'm going to have to open up the side of the winch and have a look. But if some of the shafts is broken, we're, we're finished. It's the end of the trip. If Alan can't fix the winch, the Genesis will be forced to leave the monkfish behind and return to port. Hundred and fifty miles away in Fraserburgh, every day a tiny boat leaves harbour on their own. The Koe May fishes coastal waters for brown crabs. Her skipper John Alexander works without any crewmates all year round, whatever the weather. He has probably the most dangerous job in the most dangerous industry in Britain. It's kind of really, a really dangerous job. I, I swear the four of planning come down. You just got to know what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. And sometimes there's a fine line between the two. John catches crabs by laying out a line of 30 creels or pots. They sink to the seabed and every few days he hauls them up, removes the crabs, and then shoots them back. But today, the high tides are giving him problems. Now you can fight the weather, but you can't fight the tide. It'll beat you every day. The boys that mark the creel's positions have disappeared underwater. The boys can be pretty hard to find sometimes, but it's kind of state of tides, they'll still be just coming up. They've been out in their water, now they're up, but possibly just the top of them's showing. And the tide also drags them a good bit from where you, you drop them, so... Sometimes a bit of searching about until you actually do find them. John has spent the last 20 minutes trying to find his first line of creels. I do got a glimpse of it a moment ago, but unfortunately I've lost sight of it again, so I'll head in the general direction that I seen it, and I should pick it up from there. The boys suddenly surface to starboard. John can spin the 10 metre Chloe Bay on a sixpence. The big boy is still floating, it's not really coming up yet, it's just... The trailing boy coming from it is spreading the surface, so it's getting a bit of a struggle. John operates every aspect of the Chloe May single hand. Steering, catching the creels, operating the winches, and emptying every pot by hand. It's the first creel of the day. Three females. The first one's been yet to not too bad, so hopefully a little bit of indication of how the day is going to go. The thing is, with this job, unlike other jobs in the fishing, you're totally on your own, so you've got to try and make sure everything works fine. There's no one to help you. One of the biggest dangers is you're working too much tide, the rope's going round about you, and dragging you out over the side. I have been hit once or twice with a creel, but they've never just gotten it right yet. I've put up my arm and stopped them hitting my, my head. I broke one of the bones in my arm when the, the yells. 
this defend in my face. In stark contrast to John's lonely existence on the Chloe May, other boats operate in packs. Drawn trawlers compete over productive fishing grounds. The New Dawn and Chas Bruce are trying to muscle in on the main fleet. The prawns are on, and there is a feeding frenzy of trawlers who jostle and position to win themselves the best hauls. Chaz is taking on the bigger boats, and his aggressive tactics are paying off. The new Dawn has struck gold, and she can start paying for all her damaged gear. Oh, I'll pay for the net, no problem. <laughs> we'll only get more of them. Oh, it's a serpent. Yes, I'll lose that net. Chad and the boys spend the next 24 hours cashing in their changing fortune. And again. <laughs> even bigger this thing. I don't see those prawns, I also see his power sales. I find our share of point one. It says it comes in three, that's how I'm free now. Beautiful. Now it's a hobby in the whole way. <laughs> Working on his own, craving for crabs, has given John Alexander plenty of time to get to know his prey. The female crab has got a big white pouch to carry her eggs. Compared to now, you see the male, a small male, has got a long, thin pouch. If you see the difference between the two, this female is a lot, lot wider, a different colour. There's more a browny pink colour. And this is the, the female after the berries, after the eggs, is actually out of their body. You can see the pouch is now open and the eggs is carried inside in a big mass. It's no use for this time. Unlike most types of fishing, it's a very friendly way. Everything comes up in the creel, still alive. Anything is not needed, it's thrown back. And it's there to catch another day when it is in better condition. Brown crabs have enormous strength in their pincers, and the bigger the crab, the more powerful its claw. I'd make a fine mess your fingers, that. It's amazing that among the different types of crab is down there. Probably a lot of them that you've never seen. It's been a hard day's creeling. The Chloe May is crawling with crabs. One of the funniest looking crabs out this time again. It's not very big, but the legs are so thin. You wouldn't think it would be possible to survive in such a rugged world down there. And that seems to be about the biggest size I've ever seen of them. They're always ready for a fight. This is a spider crab, a different type of crab altogether. It's very spiny, very sharp spikes all over his body. Here's a, a slightly different one in this one. There's not a lot of here. It's the expensive ones. Lobster. A male lobster with the big claws within that body. Genesis, skipper Alan Watt is also on a one-man mission. It's down to him to fix the main winch and get fishing again. And the good news is, it's just a chain. The gears and the shafts are okay, sir. That's a plus. 
É o único anel que é nas bagas e é da bola. Não cheguei com o anel, é que são. Antes a pular-se. Sim, By the time Alan fixes his winch, 45 mile an hour winds are sweeping in from the Atlantic. I'm expecting uh, just very short left force 10, maybe violent storm 11, just within the next hour or so. I'm we'll just even the gear back and we'll see what happens from the whole. Take care if you're at the deck this time, boys. With monkfish to be caught, Alan is desperate to keep fishing even though the wind quickly builds to over 50 miles an hour. The wind's increased. The swell is not the the bell yet, so what I think we'll do is we'll maybe just wait a while. We can see it gradually building now. We'll just hold on for an hour or so and see what the weather does. Storm gathers in strength, Alan is forced to abandon fishing. Get the gear aboard, button all the hatches down, get your guys inside, and just put your head to the wind. Maybe just going ahead and home or maybe a couple of knots. And that's that's the safest way to be. The Force 10 storm lasts for the next 12 hours. Genesis takes a heavy battery. The crew carry on gutting the backlog of monkfish regardless. Conditions may be bad on the Genesis, but on the Chloe May, John Alexander faces similar seas, all alone and 12 miles from land. This is what's coming to them. John manages to haul and reshoot 35 creels in just 15 minutes. Now listen, this is a good idea to test your sanity. John's been exposed to salt water for the last six hours. The salt's beginning to take a deal in my eyes now, beginning to nap. Every day, John risks his life for a few barrels of brown cow. There's two creels to go in now. It's almost a blood. Not a lot of crabs, 36. Not going to lead up. So it's been pretty poor. Up. Back in Fraserborough, someone's waiting anxiously for John's safe return. I'm feeding my bed seals now. He's clapping for attention. Another daybreak on the new dawn. There are only two days left before she has to return to port. But Chaz is in a good mood. So what are you, Jim, sir? Oh. After two weeks of gales, lost nets and poor fishing, they're raking it in. Finally, burying their bad luck. Chaz and the boys work solidly for the next 36 hours with no sleep to win themselves a decent wage. Absolutely superb. Every hole.
ball contains tens of thousands of prawns. Every single one has to be selected and graded by hand. Fast hands make fast work. That's a good try. A fine piece of fry. Here they are with Alexander. Here the brothers and sisters with their board now. <laughs> Youth has the edge in a great prawn hunt. Jazz can't get enough of it. <laughs> I wish I had one more haul, but you can, all, you can wish that all, all the time. Every week, I want oh, just one more good haul, one more, one more. When it comes to this, it comes to making money, uh, enough's never enough. I just always want a wee bit more. Genesis is enjoying the calm after the storm. And bringing in massive hauls of monkfish. Or banjos, as the crew called them. No sense crawling in this hole yet. All the same sense, a whole back full of banjos. Big air bumps. See, they're, bit, they're shaped a bit like a banjo. The wee head and the little tail. Show me the money, honey. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. That's the guys. That's the big guys. Here's the big one. <laughs> There are now over 200 boxes of premium monkfish on board. And what with another 50 boxes of super expensive megram flatfish, it's been a bumper fishing trip. Just how lucrative depends upon the price in the market. You're never sure what you're going to get until you land. Until you actually land the fish, they go in the market, and you get that tally in your hand of what you're going to get. Umpteen times, you're going to have a really, really good shot of fish. And everybody's up in a high, and you just get flattened with the prices. And then I've seen the opposite way about, where you get a really hard trip, you have very, very little fish, the weather's really poor, your hearts and souls, your boots, and you go in and you get a big price, and it just gives you a really, a really good boost. It was a good trip for Genesis. She grossed nearly £40,000 on monkfish alone. After his storm-tossed day at sea, John Alexander has £200 worth of crabs to send to Billingsgate Market. But crab meat can be an acquired taste. You want to try it? Even for his daughter, Chloe May. Chicken? Aye, chicken. <laughs> Next time on Trollerman, the McBrides are back. This time, catching too many fish. Oh, for God's sakes. As I left the car, I got to dump the hood all the same. We had a thousand pounds of my fish that were thrown over the side. And meet the pair trawlers. They're fishing with a new net. And it's all going horribly wrong. Nothing. Zilch. I've never seen it like this. I've never had a start like this. It's pathetic.